All right, what the hell do you get when you mix the hull of a T-54 with a turret from a Projecto 65? Well, you get this monstrosity. It's an Object 590. So it's basically a T-54 with side skirts mounting a elongated turret that has the unfair Russian auto reloader system, which is basically the same as the IS-3A, loading the first shell faster than the last shell inverse of the Italian version or the British version or any other version but it's a special tier 9 Russian medium fits only three crews so it doesn't fit the loader that's not that meh. you still need safe stowage and intuition perk especially for cramped Russian tanks or Chinese tanks so that loader is missing kind of a bummer but it is more expensive to produce this vehicle that obviously the T-54 so might as well jam out more T-54 than mess with the auto reloading system inside the turret so yeah it's mostly a fantasy tank work was discontinued no prototype was produced paper tank but it looks kind of like a Russian projecto if you will so longer turret T-54's hull Side skirts now included, so a little bit better at side scraping and bouncing shells, but you're not supposed to mess around with that much, even though T-54 is an excellent brawler, so this could be, but we'll take a look at the stats. So it is somewhat small of a target, so that's good. It is a medium tank after all, but this turret feels, hmm, I don't know. It's still kind of a big of a target for artillery shells hitting the back of the auto reloading mechanisms. So that might damage the gun, that might damage the turret, who knows. But meh, doesn't look half bad of a tank. Sleek, Russian-esque. So let's take a look at the modules. It is not a battle pass tank, no large repair kit for now. So this might be for ranked or something special, but they may change it later on. This is not a premium like the STRVK. It has a 100mm Russian auto reloader gun. So loading the first shell is faster than loading the last shell. It has three rounds in the magazine and the first shell is about 8.5 seconds. Last shell is about 19. Accuracy is not great. It's like a Russian 122. Aim time is also not great. It's like a Russian 122. So Alpha is about the same as all other 100 millimeters but you do get a little bit better penetration than the 200 millimeter pin t54's gun unless you're going for the dp or non-dpm route with the penetration route but everybody goes with the dpm route and fire high explosive anti tank rounds fire gold shell also the gold shell is ap it's not a high explosive anti tank it has only 270 millimeters of pin so not the 330 as you would expect chugging from uh, this thing. So when all else fails, just jam high explosive anti tank with 330 millimeters of pin. You'll go through mouses. You'll go through E100s. No problem. <laughs> so that's a big downside. The dramatic less of a gold shell pin. But we'll take a look at the firepower now. So crew of three. As I explained, no loader for safe stowage or intuition. Bummer. And let's take a look at the firepower. <clears throat> so with a 100% crew, it's about 2.97 aim time. Which is, uh, for a 100mm, that is still kind of long. And 0 0.41 accuracy is still kind of bad. And since this is auto reloader, it doesn't get a rammer to help you with the DPM. DPM is okay in terms of the same DPM with T-54 mounting the higher pin 100mm has 5 degrees of gun depression, 23 elevation elevation is good but gun depression is average T-54 got buff I think with 6 degrees of gun depression now yep 6 degrees of gun depression so slightly better and then you move on to the object 140 with 7 but that's a different story uh, average, turret traverse, so 
so you take about 42 seconds to reload three rounds into the clip there's only three rounds in the clip and it's 4.3 seconds between each shot so you cannot just jam out three rounds in the span of like three seconds or four seconds so this is uh this is a long intershell reload time so it's like almost the same time it takes to just reload the t54 so as you can see with the t54 it takes about 6.4 seconds so just two seconds less than another round from a t54 so it's not that quick of an intershell reload time disappointingly and it's 225 for apcr so let's take a look at the actual gun stats right here 250 uh 225 for apcr round velocity is high which is great but uh no high explosive anti-tank you get an ap round with more penetration at 268 slower shell velocity but normalization the five degrees of normalization and eh, still not comparable to the 330 in my honest opinion for the high explosive anti-tank it doesn't lose penetration at distance too so bup high explosive is just high explosive another downside to this gun is dispersion factor is not great it's like a tank destroyer now heavy tank have about 0 0.16 to 0 0.2 some turret tank destroyers with large guns have about the same uh, 0 0.25 to 0 0.27 or so usually medium tanks are about 0 0.14 or so or to 0 0.1 if you're better like a patent so if you take a look with a patent which has very good shooting while moving accuracy and turret traverse you can see that this is nowhere near close to the accuracy of moving the tank's hull and turret and the dispersion factors it's not even close so this is kind of awful also aim time is longer way longer and accuracy is not as good so this gun feels uncomfortable to me let's compare it with the wz120 Yep, WZ120 has slightly faster reload, better accuracy, and a lot better. Half of the value of dispersion factors. So, you do have the shell velocity, but... Eh, and the auto-reloading clippy thing, but... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this gun. Let's see if the accuracy is the same with the dispersion factor to the Char Future Project 4. It's close, but it's still bad compared to that thing. So what I consider this accuracy in terms of the dispersion factor is similar to the Grill 15. You are only accurate if you fully aim the gun and not move the vehicle. So as you can see, the dispersion factor while moving is about the same. And turret traverse is better. And tank traverse is better, but it's not a medium tank. You're not supposed to flank around unless you're danger close. And snipe at a distance. So shifting to targets is pretty rough with this vehicle. Disappointingly to say. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I mean it's nowhere comparable to any other medium tank. Medium tanks have 0 0.15. And gun traverse or tur traverse for the gun is not as horrible. Ugh. <laughs> Ew. 0 0.23. That is terrible. So overall, <clears throat> uh, this gun, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, it's not accurate. It takes long to aim. And shifting with the turret or the hull will dramatically alter the gun. As well as you don't get the gold round. As well as intershell reload time is pretty long. It's 4.3 seconds intershell reload time. So, I mean, you do surprise people with 1,000 damage burst. But you have to run away. Oh, you don't have to run away. You still have 8.2 seconds of reload time. Whereas T-54s have 6 seconds. 6.5 seconds or so. So it's not like the IS-3A compared to the IS-3. IS-3A has better reload time compared to IS-3 since they don't get a rammer. That was a big buff. So I'll take you to a look. But IS-3A compared to IS-3s. Here is my IS-3 with the rammer, 
and crew, obviously, but it takes about 11.17 seconds to reload the gun. Alright, fine. But for the IS-3A, it has a buff where even though it doesn't have a rammer, it still get 11.4 seconds of reload. So it's compensated with the lack of a rammer. That's the difference. So you can still play this thing as an IS-3 when you're out of shells in the clip or the magazine. So for the Object 590, it's a little bit slower in terms of the DPM output. So it's not as a heavy brawler as a T-54 in terms of the gun. So sometimes you have to be a little bit more reserved when, when you're playing with this vehicle. So, eh, let's see what they categorize the T-54 as. The T-54 is a versatile medium tank. It's not support. So this is still versatile medium. It's not assault medium tank. Alright, I thought it was assault medium. Alright, but eh, the gun's debatable. So we'll put that off for now. But let's take a look at the armor. So it has 1,800 health, which is above average for a medium tank at tier 9. Uh, Armor-wise, it's a T-54's hull. So it's okay against lower tiers. And lower plate is about 220, so always shoot the upper plate on Russian tanks-esque when you're face-hugging them. But turret front is only about 230. It's relatively flatter compared to the sides so you could jam shells into the machine gun ports or the periscopes for the gunner so it's only about 223 though Ugh, it's only 200 millimeters rounded it's not like 240 ish on the t54 you have a commander cupola and a gunner cupola or loader cupola which are both are huge and only about 100 millimeters so that's a loader one that's a commander one both will get penetrated Side armor is, there's no side skirts, only 85? Track is 20. Wow, you don't have, the side skirts are a lie? <laughs> uh, track, armor, 85. Wow, they didn't, they didn't even include the side skirts. They're supposed to include the side skirts. Oh, well, ugh. <laughs> I mean, the side skirts will help, but it's only 85 millimeters, so side scraping is still not that great, unless you're baiting out shots, but... <laughs> Alright, side of the turret is 130, rounded upwards, 110, so random values. Some parts are 130, some parts are 110, some parts are 100. Huh, rear is 145 for the hull. Top of the turret is only 30, so you get high explosive right here, and you're having a bad day. So, uh, armor is not as OP, in a sense, as T-54s. So you have a more prominent commander and loader cupolas. Top of the turret is also only 40, so easier to overmatch with large caliber guns while face-hugging. And the side of the turret with the turret cheeks are thinner, in a sense. So any bots with high explosive anti-tank rounds auto-aimed onto your turret will likely pin. And that's, uh, that's a no-no. That's not good for you. So let's take a look at T-54 in terms of the armor values. But this thing has smaller commander cupola-ish. Well, it's still rounded, but... It's only 30 on top of the turret. <laughs> uh, you can also get overmatched, but you don't have the turret cheek weakness. It's 240 now, so jamming shells into the periscopes or the gunner scopes or the coaxial machine gun, not likely to pin. You do have the loader and commander cupola, which are the weak spots. Upper plate is the same, lower plate, yeah, about the same. Side armor, 5mm less, but this thing doesn't have side skirts. Even though uh, Object 590 should have side skirts, it's not modeled for some reason. Alright, fine. So, armor is, I would say, not as good as the T-54. Mostly because you have the weak spots for the commander cupola, as well, or for the gunner sights, and the machine gun port. And the uh, commander cupola is a little bit bigger. Same goes with the loader cupola. So, it's only 
100 millimeter come to uh, compared to 100, so it's also less. <laughs> it's a smaller target too, I think. But then again, that may be just the crap I put onto the skin mod. Yeah, it looks smaller. It looks definitely smaller. <laughs> so armor, ah, it, ah, I want to say it's okay, but you're not going to haul down anything. You'll get pinned in terms of the machine gun ports for the coax and the gunner sights. No, oh, you do have more health, so that's a plus. Let's take a look at mobility. So 40 tons weighs more than the T-54, obviously because of the turret. Has less horsepower per ton ratio, so only 17.5-ish. Top speed of 50, uh, 52, reverse of 20, hull traverse average. So less engine power as what well, I would think. So less horsepower per ton ratio. T-54s have about 21. So this thing is not as mobile as a T-54. So why the hell am I judging this thing? Oh, it's only about 20. But you put a turbocharger on this thing, it goes up to 21. But why the hell am I comparing it to a T-54? Well, it's like a T-54. If you have a different gun. So that's the whole basis, but T-54 is one of the high tier, originally, top tier, tier 9 vehicles. And one of the best performing tier 9 mediums, along with the E-50, that was way back when. Things got changed around, but... Uh, oh, terrain resistance. The same as a T-54. So, compare this to a T-54. Same terrain resistance, so you have less horsepower per time ratio. Therefore, you are slower-ish. So, yeah, yeah, okay, give or take. <laughs> Concealment, average, a little bit above average, but yeah, okay, whatever. It's not a bad chat, so nothing to say about it. <clears throat> View range, 380. Yeah, it's okay, it's a medium tank, it's Russian. Uh, is it 390 for the T-54? Yep, 390, so 10 meters less. Uh, radio is above average, but you don't need that big of a radio. Radio was never a big thing, unless you're playing like low tiers. You get no artillery support or tank destroyer support. So that's more relevant at lower tiers than high tiers. High tier, 850 is the same as 761. Alright, so object, 590. How the hell would I rate this thing? Well, it's all about the gun, obviously. It's about the gun shooting three rounds in terms of a, in terms of a burst, if you would call it. But the intershell reload time is 4.3 seconds, which is bad <laughs> for a bursting medium tank. That's not a big of a burst. It's like the Char Future 4. It takes like three seconds between each shot, which is not exactly a burst compared to the Cobra, which is like 1.3 seconds. That's a burst. So it's not a burst medium tank. It's almost close to the same reload time of a T-54. So not exactly a burst. But you do have the Russian unfair auto reloader. So the inverse auto reloader system. So you don't get loosed out in terms of the last shell taking a long ass time to reload. So you cannot defend yourself. So that's a plus. But another downside is accuracy, as you saw with the dispersion factors, as well as the actual accuracy and aim time, are not good. So that's a big hit to my ratings. That's pretty bad. So it's not accurate while you're trying to snap shotting a target across a map. But if you're close, like 100 meters or even 150 or so, you still might hit something if you're snap shotting. But the gun bloom is going to be larger than the average tier 9 medium tank. It's going to be uncomfortable using it too. So, big downside. And aim time is long, accuracy is not that great. Though you have better shell velocity, so you don't have to lead the shot. But, eh, you also don't get the gold shell. The gold shell is the AP round. So, it's not the 330, so you cannot really just spam all gold shell, hopefully killing everything so I mean if this thing is top tier against a bunch of comets or like t20s yeah it's pretty good 
obviously, any tier, no, tier 9 against tier 7s are pretty good. But there's so many downsides of playing with this vehicle than playing with a T-54. Because you're lacking a lot of the stuff. You're lacking a lot of the gold shell pin, accuracy, even a loader is missing. So armor is also missing for the turret cheeks. And you have less horsepower per time ratio and less view range. So there's a lot of drawbacks to having the auto reloader system. And it's not even a burst type of auto reloading system. It takes 4.3 seconds. So how would I rate this thing? Ooh, I would probably... If I would rate the T-54, it's one of my favorite tier 9s. I moved the crew to the Object 140 because I don't play as much now. But here is the original T-54 crew. So as you can see, it's pretty specked out. And these girls are kicking ass and writing names. But I would rate the T-54 nowadays as a... 7.5 or 8.8.0 It's pretty good. It's not OP OP, but it's still very devastating Especially to a tier 7 especially to something like a Cromwell or not Cromwell Comet or T20 medium tank or a freaking uh, A44 Ugh. <laughs> This thing will chew all of those mediums up even heavy tanks like a Tiger P. Ugh. Tiger P against this thing, you will cry your Tiger P's eyes out. So, or Tiger. Tiger has a little bit DPM, but it's a big punching bag. It has the DPM to punch that thing in like 30 seconds. <laughs> so, yeah, this thing is a beast. I will give it 7.5 or 8 out of 10. No question. It's one of the best tier 9 medium tanks. But this thing, so much... Drawback, so much drawback. Um, there's a lot of drawback. I will give it like a six out of ten. I mean, it's above average ish, maybe a five out of ten. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm slowly convincing myself to give it a less grade just because of the amount of drawback there is. It's the same concept of yes. I could do pretty well with the vehicle. It's the same debate with the Caliban. A lot of people are saying that the Caliban is OP because of the Alpha. Yeah, that's the only good thing about it. <laughs> that's the only good thing about the Caliban. The Alpha. The rest of the stats are shit. I can do well in this vehicle against a bunch of tier 8s. Yes, but it requires more skills and more effort to put into the Caliban than something like a Action X Carnarvon. I can easily rack health with the Action X Carnarvon and doesn't even sweat about it. Whereas when you're playing the Caliban, you have to sweat a little bit because of the long reload time. So yes, you could do well in the Caliban, but it takes less effort in the Action X Carnarvon. Same goes with the Object 590 compared to a T-54. Yes, you could do well, but it requires more effort and more skills. So in that sense, I will give it a 5.5 out of 10. It's, um, it's, bleh. <laughs> it's the gun. The gun's not that accurate or bursty, as you would say, to output the DPM. So it's a hard decision to make, but I kind of feel that's justified. Simply because less mobility, less armor for the turret, less view range, and come performance not as comparable even if you have the the three round clip it takes way too long between each shot to make that work also you're lacking a loader also you're lacking gold shell 5.5 .5 out of 10 there you go folks so i have a few more i think one more premium tier 8 medium tank coming to take a look at but yeah let's do some catching up so thank you guys for watching this video hopefully it's a hard debate on stats nowadays but Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Sakura